Hey y'all, Data Guy here. Now, with the expansion of AI, ML, and really just vast amounts of data needing for processing in today's modern data landscape, I thought it was appropriate to make a video covering what a data lake is. Um, and so data lakes have become more and more prevalent over the past few years. Um, and they're really important because you know they're able to store large amounts of unstructured data, like the type of data you'll need for large language models um, and things of that similar ilk. So today I'm gonna be diving through exactly what a data lake is, some of the pros and cons of using one versus other data storage solutions, and then talk about some of the common providers uh, for data lakes so you have an effective toolkit to choose whether or not you need a data kit, a data lake for your particular use case, and then where you should go to go and get a data lake that fits with your needs. So without further ado, let's get into it. So just starting with kind of what a data lake is by strict definition, a data lake is a centralized repository that is designed to store, process, and secure large volumes of data in various formats, including structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data. And what distinguishes it from a traditional data warehouse like a Snowflake uh, is that it doesn't store data in a hierarchical format. Uh, it requires data to be cleansed and structured before storage. Uh, so data lakes allow the storage of raw data in its native format. So I can just toss a video, a call, a uh, computer log, all into the same data lake. Uh, and this approach offers flexibility in data management, enabling businesses to leverage big data technologies for advanced analytics, machine learning models, and real-time uh, analytics applications by querying that data at will. Um, so that's kind of just like a high level what a data lake is. So now what do you actually use a data lake for? So the initial main use case for data lakes were big data analytics. Um, you know, as the explosion of kind of just social media, massive amounts of interactions, massive amounts of data around each person, and also just data around everything over the past you know, decade or so. Data lakes are able to support the analysis of big data by giving you a scalable platform to store and analyze vast amounts of data on the petabyte scale. Um, so on a scale that really would be almost cost uh, prohibitive to run in a normal database, database, data lakes are able to deliver on the promise of actually storing and analyzing all of your data because it's able to drive down the storage costs. Um, and then it also enables analysts to run really complex queries on data in its raw form, which can allow for more profound insights and discovery uh, because when you're analyzing the raw data, it hasn't gone through any cleansing processes that might've stripped it of any kind of unique features. Yes, it might make it more standardized, but you might also be losing some of the more granular insights that you get from actually querying the raw form of data. And the second is machine learning and advanced analytics. Um, so yes, now we have the great ability to store large volumes of diverse data, uh, but it is also is a really ideal environment for building and training machine learning models. Uh, you have all the data right there, ready to use in its raw format, untainted. Uh, you can easily split it into uh, training and testing data sets. Uh, and data scientists are able to access a wide array of data types to improve that model accuracy performance. You can keep switching out, hey, maybe I don't want to look at uh, support calls. Maybe I actually just want to look at the Twitter reviews that my company is getting to analyze you know, what the current sentiment in the market is. And so it makes it easy to have kind of all these uh, different sources of data at your fingertips so you can plug and play and interact and plug into your models and see if you get a better you know, result in your R score um, by including that data. Then a third uh, use case is and another analytics one, but this last analytics I promised is the ability to do true real-time analytics. Um, a lot of times, and this is kind of an example here, this is actually a Databricks diagram um, showing how to build a lake house where you have your data lake and then you also have a scalable compute engine like Spark or something similar to actually be able to process and analyze that data as it comes in in real time. Uh, maybe you want to just take a slice of life and you want to look at all the data over the past day. Um, and this allows you to make quicker decisions based on the most current information because you're taking that raw data just as it comes in and then analyzing it. Um, and this capability is really crucial for applications that require more immediate insights like something like fraud detection or an online recommendation engine like an Amazon or a Netflix. Um, having the ability to kind of query all of this historical raw information enables you to give those really uh, accurate real-time insights. Um, and then the fourth one here is also data discovery and visualization. Um, if you store the data in its raw, unstructured format, data lakes allow you to facilitate data discovery um, and allowing businesses to, it's similarly to you know, how it enables analysts to uncover new insights by you know, querying and summing out different data sets. Uh, 
you're also able to just layer a data visualization tool directly on top of your data lakes and help you identify patterns, trends, relationships within your data at a more macro level. So saying, hey, you know, while this is cool, well, you know, maybe your analyst level is just plugging in different data sets into an ML model. Uh, maybe at a more macro level, you're looking at, hey, you know, how has the uh, volume of Twitter uh, requests that we're getting within a week correlate to the amount of actual uh, new trial signups we have for our product and kind of looking at the high level correlations between those two different uh, pieces of data. Um, and then compounding all of those previous uh, use cases is cost effective data storage. Data lakes often leverage cloud-based storage solutions uh, you know, that provide scalability and cost effectiveness. And so businesses are able to store large volumes of data without a massive upfront investment in infrastructure because you can just keep scaling and tacking on horizontal uh, data storage options instead of needing to have kind of a pre-built out of the box solution that you invest a lot of time into building up and then you can actually send data into it. Data lakes allow you to start ingesting data at day one because all it requires is a subscription to some kind of data storage service like an S3, like an Azure Data Lake storage to actually begin uh, adjusting your data. So now that we know some of the different use cases for data lakes, let's take a look at the pros and cons of what a data lake can offer you to help you decide whether you should use one for your particular use case. So now the benefits of having a data lake are number one is scalability and flexibility. Data lakes are designed to scale horizontally, accommodating you know, petabytes and even larger uh, sets of data from various sources. And this scalability ensures that as an organization's data footprint grows, the data lake can also grow with minimal disruption or manual intervention. And this flexibility to store data in any format, structured, semi-structured, unstructured, allows businesses to leverage all of your data without the need for extensive pre-processing. Uh, it also gives you much better cost efficiency. Uh, data lake solutions, especially those hosts in the cloud, follow as pay-as-you-go pricing models. So you're only paying for what you're using, which might be more effective than a traditional data warehousing solution. And it also stores your data in raw format, which eliminates the need for costly and time-consuming data transformations processes uh, before it can be stored and paying for the compute necessary to just process all of your data, since you're processing it for those analytics purposes as needed. Um, it also enables advanced analytics and machine learning, as we discussed previously, uh, by supporting the use of big data processing frameworks, machine learning algorithms directly on your raw data. And this capability is really crucial for people that are looking to gain competitive advantages through advanced analytics uh, in predictive modeling and real-time analytics applications by really giving you access to do those things where previously it might not even have been possible. Um, and then finally, improved data discovery and innovation and really democratizing data. Um, the ability to just have all this raw data available in one large location really encourages data discovery. It encourages you to see those little uh, linkages between different sets of data that might not be noticed otherwise. Um, and it really enables kind of those more advanced users like analysts and data scientists to experiment with data more freely, which can lead to even more innovative uses of data uh, that might create value for your particular uh, business or use case. However, with all these benefits, there are a few drawbacks. So the number one risk with the data lake is the risk in it becoming a data swamp because of the complexity of management integration. Be the very flexibility that makes data lakes very powerful for certain users can also lead to a lot of complexity in actually managing them. Uh, and without proper go governance, a data lake can quickly become a data swamp where data isn't categorized, it's not easy to find, uh, and integrating data from various sources and containing those metadata really just can compound this and propose a lot of different challenges. Um, and so you really need to have skilled data professionals that are working on uh, establishing kind of, you know, how this data lake is managed and might even be a full-time job to make sure that your data lake is managed and kept up to date with all the different integrations that it needs. Uh, it also can sometimes result in security and compliance risks. Uh, you know, if you're storing sensitive data in a data lake, you need to have really stringent security measures, especially if it's European customer data um, and compliance with those data protection regulations. And the open nature of data lakes can make them vulnerable to breaches if they're not properly secured. Um, so that is another significant risk to kind of running a data lake if you're in, uh, you know, an industry like healthcare or like fintech services. Um, and then also requires specialized skills, as we discussed. You need to really be well versed in big data technologies, data management practices, and analytics. And you need to just know all the different complexities that come with running a data lake to maintain one. Um, and then finally, just potential for underutilization. If you know it's unorganized, if you don't actually have a clear path for someone to get in there and actually get value from your data, you know, not you know, bad navigation, 
it's just kind of going to sit there. Uh, it's going to cost a lot for the compute. And if no one's actually using it, your data is not providing any value and it's just purely a cost thing for you. So you need to make sure that if you're going to go down this data lake path, you need actually have a solid strategy for using that data lake uh, once it's in production. So now that we've discussed the pros and cons data lakes, let's cover a quick run through of the different providers of solutions you can use for a data lake. Now, first one that comes to mind that is just a strict data lake um, is Cloudera. Um, Cloudera provides an enterprise data cloud that is really just comprehensive one-stop shop for all your data lake capabilities, secure storage, analytics across pu public and private clouds, and really catering to larger businesses that need flexibility in their data management strategies. Another very popular option you probably heard of is Databricks. Um, so Databricks is really a unified analytics platform. It doesn't call itself Data Lake, uh, but it is really a platform that kind of combines data lakes and data warehouses, no, which is known as a uh, lake house. And this process platform is really to, uh, kind of optimized for simplifying data engineering, data science, analytics on large scale data sets using Spark, since that's the other day kind of what the core product of Databricks is. Um, and so this is a really good solution if you want, you know, just, hey, one-stop shop, I want to dump my data to data lake, I want to have some data warehouse for those needs, I want to be able to have an engine uh, via Spark to run compute on, uh, you can do it all through good old Databricks. On the AWS side of things, you have AWS Lake Formation, and what this will do is basically give you a simplified setup for using a data lake via uh, S3 buckets. So you'll see you have actually Amazon S3 uses the data lake storage and then lake formation kind of will give you that overarching management layer on top of those S3 buckets and also connect to all the other Amazon services. So if you're in Amazon centric shop and you're already using a lot of Amazon analytics processes, Amazon lake formation probably isn't a bad bet. Um, and then for Google, you don't much have kind of a one-stop shop. It's more they want you to use their collection of uh, services. So you have Dataproc for Spark or Hadoop workloads, BigQuery for traditional, uh, you know, kind of data queries, and then cloud storage through Google Cloud Storage for really cheap, you know, unstructured data storage. So that's kind of the true data lake side of things. They don't really have like a one-stop platform for setting everything up uh, in Google. So one knock there, but they do have all the different components you would need to build your own data lake. Um, and then finally, we have uh, Microsoft Azure. And so Azure is a similar uh, process to AWS where it provides, you know, one-stop shop scalable solution with Azure Data Lake Storage. Um, and this similarly integrates really well with the different Azure analytics services, single storage platform, very secure. Um, and, you know, while it might not play well with things outside of Azure, it's going to play really well at all the different Azure components and facilitate kind of the development of more advanced analytics solutions. Um, so those are kind of the main providers from the three clouds and then, you know, the two uh, big players in the data lake solution space. So I hope you found this video helpful in understanding what a data lake is, some of the pros and cons, what it's best used for, and some of the different solutions uh, that you can utilize to set up your own data lake. Uh, so hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.